Today on BRS TV Investigates, how long does it really take for your salt water to mix up clear? Hi, I'm Randy, a host for the YouTube series BRS TV Investigates, where we take popular reefing theories, methods, questions, and products, and dive even further than what the manuals and packaging will tell you in order to put them to the test in real world environments, rate them on our scale from reef fantasy to reef certainty, and share with you, the reefing community, what we find. Today we're expanding our investigative testing on some of our most popular salt mixes by seeking to answer two questions. One, do salt mixes really fully dissolve in less than an hour? And two, does the speed at which they mix clear really matter? For those reefers mixing salt as needed and to be used rather quickly, mixing clarity is fairly important to ensure that all of the various additives and materials in the salt mix dissolve evenly. And the faster this happens, the quicker you can use it for water changes. Along with that, for those mixing larger batches to use over time or in auto water change stations, knowing how long to mix the salt initially can also help to ensure a more homogeneous solution from top to bottom, especially if storing it uncirculated after mixing. For many just looking at the mixed salt water in a five gallon bucket or brute trash can, it can seem that some salts dissolve rather quick, like a handful of minutes or fairly long, like a few hours or more. And in most cases, it does get most of the way there rather fast. But today we're looking for absolute clarity in a controlled environment to get a more complete picture of when salt is fully dissolved. In most cases, I'd probably say that a majority of us, myself included, would consider a salt to be fully mixed by looking for visual cues, such as no large grains or particulates in the bottom of the mixing container, and to some degree that the water isn't cloudy to our naked eye. For decades, I'd say that this approach has obviously produced successful results and still does, and it's probably not mission critical that the salt is absolutely crystal clear before using it. But for those of you looking for what I would call best practice, this might provide a clearer window into how long to mix before use. So is there any benefit to mixing salt longer than what our eyes would tell us is done? If making decisions for your reef based on absolute best practices, there could be. By creating a fully dissolved homogeneous saltwater solution, the water could less likely cause precipitation in the tank or perhaps even lessen the chances of creating a bioirritation to the corals or fish's tissue from undissolved particles. In order to put our naked eye to the test, we plan to test our eight most common salt mixes, Instant Ocean Reef Crystals and Standard Salts, Red Sea Blue Bucket and Red Sea Coral Pro, HW Reefer, Brightwell's Neomarine, and finally the Tropic Marin Classic and Pro Salts. Using two power heads to create a vortex, we'll mix up 20 gallons of each salt mix to 35 parts per thousand or 1.026 specific gravity unheated at room temperature for a full 24 hours and compare each one against our custom BRS eye chart. To determine where each salt would be considered clear, we plan to choose a point where the bottom of the chart at line 12 looks to be as close to clear as the fresh RODI water start point. We also plan to gauge each salt mix for its color contrast where undissolved microparticles that might reflect light and can't be seen with the naked eye clear up to a point where the orange and blue bars of the eye chart resemble the same RODI water start point. Okay, let's get right into the results, starting with the Instant Ocean Reef Crystals, where on the left we see our empty tank of RODI water as the starting reference point for clarity and contrast, and on the right we see the 24-hour time lapse of reef crystals mixing up gradually and becoming clear. By the end of the 24-hour mark, I'd say that we didn't see a full improvement to the clarity of line 12, and as for contrast, there's what appears to be a white haze of microscopic undissolved particles remaining, which shows by the blue and orange bands on the eye chart. All in all, using our standard for clarity and contrast, I'd say that this one is still not fully mixed or completely homogeneous after 24 hours. Instant Ocean Standard is next and we can see that it does look to mix up a bit clearer than the reef crystals and even around hour 20 and beyond still looks to be clearing up even more. However, by the time we hit the 24 hour mark and comparing to the tank of RODI water, there's still some lack of clarity to the eye chart at line 12 and a slight haze to the tank in the contrast department, which I'd also say is not fully homogenized. 
Moving on to the Red Sea Blue Bucket Salt, it looks to start clearing up relatively quickly in the first 10 hours and continues to gradually improve over time. Actually, at around the 23 hour mark, I'd call this one fully clear judging by the sharpness of the letters in line 12, which comes in just before the 24 hour cutoff. As for contrast, however, there still seems to be some slight haze to the tank all the way up to the 24 hour mark, so I'd have to call it not fully mixed in that department. We mixed Red Sea Coral Pro next, and for this one, we see that from about the five hour mark and continuing to the 20 hours and beyond, the contrast or cloudiness in the tank just doesn't seem to settle as is evident by the orange and blue color bands. Along with that, for the clarity of line 12 compared to the RODI water, this one also doesn't seem to come fully back to clear within the 24 hour time frame. Let's take a look at HW Reefer Salt Mix next, which starts to improve its clarity and contrast at around the five to eight hour mark and continues to do so throughout the entire test. Around 18 to 20 hours, we continue to see gradual improvements in both categories, where finally at around 22 to 23 hours, it ends up being pretty darn close to the fresh RODI water, both by looking at line 12 and the orange and blue bands of color on the eye chart. Next was Brightwell Neomarine's turn, and right away, within the first two hours, we start to clearly see the BRS eye chart. The clarity continues to sharpen pretty rapidly, where after seven hours, I'd actually consider this one to be fully mixed from a clarity standpoint by the letters on line 12. As for contrast, we're probably being a bit nitpicky here, but there does seem to still be a very slight haze of the water throughout the test, where I'd finally feel comfortable calling it fully mixed for contrast right around the 21 hour mark. Nearing the end of our salt mixing test, we have the Tropic Marin Classic up, where although there is some clarity to the eye chart after the first few hours, there is a contrast cloudiness to it that continually improves slightly over the entire test. However, in the end, I couldn't call the Tropic Marin Classic fully mixed for either clarity or contrast, as both just don't seem to fully come back to the same as RODI water. Last up is the Tropic Marin Pro Salt Mix, which already by hour two looks to be very close to clear on line 12. However, we do continue to see slight improvements over each hour, where finally at hour eight, I would call this one fully mixed on the clarity scale. As for contrast for the Tropic Marin Pro, it does seem to take a few more hours to reach the fully mixed point where there isn't the slightest of haze to the tank, which appears to happen right around hour 14. But again, I'm probably splitting hairs here by my own eyes judgment. All right, to answer the first question today of do salt mixes really fully dissolve in less than an hour? I'd have to give this one a one on the Reef Fantasy scale since none of these salts dissolved completely in the normal time frame that most might think it takes and mixing longer to achieve a homogenous solution likely has some benefits in either precipitation or coral and fish tissue. That said, I'd say most reefers have mixed salt in less time than we've indicated here without seeing negative results. What we're largely talking about here revolves around questions that reefers ask of what's the bare minimum and what's best practice. And I think that when it comes to which salt to use, you can use today's experiment to help make the right decision for you and your tank. As for the second question, does the speed at which they mix clear really matter? This one I'll split right down the middle at a five. It is obvious that some salts do mix faster than others, but does it matter? Each of these salts have produced undeniable success for a wide amount of reefers and almost all of us have mixed our salt water to less than perfect clarity we did today. That in mind, it's not absolutely critical that you pick the highest performing salts or mix them perfectly like we did. From what we've seen here today, it's pretty easy to see that our naked eye may not be the best judge of ultimate clarity when mixing up salt water. However, if mixing beyond the point of seeing large particles or a slight haze in your mixing reservoir is of value to you, it could be best practice to mix for a set time of somewhere between eight to 24 hours and come back to use it knowing that most salts have probably fully dissolved and are ready to go. Next week, we continue our BRS TV investigates on salt mixes by examining what's left over inside each tank after it was stored for about four weeks to get an idea of any impact that it may have on your saltwater storage bin maintenance schedule, as well as any impacts on overall clarity to the saltwater solution each salt mix made and what that may look like inside your tank. Each week we give away some awesome reefing gear and this week we're giving away a NIOS Quantum 160 protein skimmer worth right at 500 bucks. So click that link in the description or head on over to the site and click free prizes to sign up and win. Lastly, join in the poll over on our Reef to Reef thread and vote on how long do you mix your saltwater before using it. 
Stay tuned as we continue to explore and test even more reef myths and certainties around salt mixes. And if you have questions or more ideas for things you'd like to see us test, drop a comment below, share your ideas on our Reef to Reef thread, or better yet, jump on our hashtag AskBRSTV Facebook group, where the BRS crew, including Ryan and I, get in there and answer your questions directly. And we'll see you next time on BRS TV.